Hey everybody, I'm Bob Baker with Jazz Guitar Today, and we're here today with Cheryl Bailey. Hi, Cheryl. How you doing? I'm doing great. So Good. why are we why are we here? Well, I'll tell you why we're here. One is um I actually did try to get a hold of you about two years ago. Um we were working with Beth Marlis on some stuff, and and you were you were kind enough to work with Beth, and we did all of the female heads of education and all that. And so you've been in the magazine before, which is great. But I wanted always wanted to try to reach back out to you and have you as you, you know, in oh, in, in an right. interview. So it's, it's all right. Cool. Okay, and, I guess we're doing it now. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're here. So Frank. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm ready. <laughs> so Let's do Frank, it. Frank Vignola, who's like, you know, a great buddy of mine and, and the magazine, huge supporter and all of that. He sends me a, a message the other day and says, man, you got to interview Cheryl Bailey. So she just killed it at Berlin the other night. And he sent me the video and all this kind of stuff. So I went, I listened to the video and, um, and I, well, my first response was, yes, that would be great. I would love it. Um, and then I listened to the video and I, I, that's when I immediately reached out to you and said, Hey, can we do this thing? And here you are. So mm -hmm. I'm thrilled. Mm -hmm. So for great. people that might not know who you are, that's their tough luck. They need to go to Wikipedia. <laughs> well, I don't know. Wikipedia has some strange things that I oh, wonder where I, did I that know. come from. But, Why don't they just go to my website? Go to your website. Um, <laughs> and they'll get the facts. Get, get, the, get the facts straight. So uh, among other things, uh, and I don't want to focus on this too much, but you uh, run the guitar department at Berkeley School of Music. Well, not single-handedly. I well, am assistant chair, but I have a very great mentor who's a great guitarist, great educator. Uh, Kim Perlack is the chair, but we work together. So, um, so I have some help. But we have about nine hundred guitar students, and about close to sixty faculty. So it does take at least two of us to <laughs> make got, things run so smoothly. When I was at Georgia State University in the jazz department down there as a guitar guy, I think we had 10, you mm -hmm. know? <laughs> well, this is the, yeah, this is the largest depart guitar department in the world. And I mean, when I was here, actually there were probably about a thousand guitars when I was a student here. But anyway, yes, it's pretty mad. I mean, our, yeah, our, the guitar program is as big as probably most music schools so i did <laughs> and, and, and as much as i appreciate that you're there and i and i really do i mean i think it's i think it's it's great I, um it's a wonderful thing but i kind of want to talk to you a little about a little bit more about the the rounded cheryl bailey first of all you're a hell of a player congratulations i mean you, you. You, you play play beautifully i know that you started Thank like you. a lot of us did you started with in, in the kind of rock thing and mm -hmm. uh and moved over which which is what you know, I think many, many people do that. Do you find that most of the students, I, I, I'm going back to the education thing, do you find that most of the students coming into Berkeley are primarily, you know, kind of from the rock school or do they come in as fledging jazz? I mean, how how is that looking these days? It's a mix. I mean, but I do think that in general, mm -hmm. we're guitar players and we start with the blues. Mm -hmm. So maybe someone's coming in and they're you know 18 or 19 years old and they're playing jazz but they're still probably relatively new to it i mean it's very rare you find somebody who only plays that so right. i mean you know they probably started like i did when i was 13 i played heavy metal and blues and and i then i got into jazz so we yeah, when i came to berkeley about 18 years old i was into jazz but i was still new to it mm -hmm. um so i think that's just true i mean i think the guitar particularly the blues is such a unifying principle in the, on the instrument. So, right. and I mean, I'm also from that school of thought that all great jazz should have blues in it as a blues expression in it. Right. For my taste, what I like. So, so yeah, I think so. But I think that's how we connect into the instrument and and what we find in common. What's the first step? The first step is to listen to it and fall in love with it. I mean, I think, no, I, not a thought. I know that everyone can expand their knowledge of music through understanding harmony. How do standards work? And then how do jazz tunes work? And secondary dominance and sub -fought. So that can be great. And you can treat it as a science experiment. 
because it is fascinating. And there is an element of math and science to understanding harmony that's great. But if you really want to take it somewhere, you have to be in love with it. I'm in love with it. That's a great answer. It's a great answer. <laughs> So listen to some West, like, I mean, and, and someone like that, or someone like Peter Bernstein, there's so many guitar players, or Grant Green, even if you're just new to it, that transcend the instrument or the genre that I think particularly if you're a blues or rock player and you listen to Grant Green, you're like, oh man, those are blues licks. I can get with that. Mm -hmm. So find those doorways or Jim Hall is just very lyrical and very, you don't need a degree in anything other than just that you love melody and sound and a great feeling or maybe not guitar players. I mean, I fell in love with Charlie Parker and I still am in love with Charlie Parker. And, you know, so just let that music guide you. And then, then that'll help you take those further steps in jazz other than what you can learn it as any kind of musician about harmony and rhythm and all the, all the mathematical elements of it. <laughs> I like that actually. That's, that's a great. It's a great answer. So you personally, okay. So you're a player. I mean, you perform. You know, you're, you're recording. You've, mm -hmm. you've done all that. You're an educator. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. do teach. You do have you know stuff that you do, and you're an administrator. Mm -hmm. When do you practice? Do you practice? Oh, I love to. I'm a practicer. I get up very early in the morning and I practice and um and you know you don't need your guitar to practice either by the way no, <laughs> think I, about I, that one no but, I, but I, I, physical, I've, I've practiced but, many times on the airplane but I get it yeah. yeah absolutely but but it is a physically demanding instrument and there's a way in my head that I hear that I want to play that's very demanding so um but I'm also feel the same way about my physical fitness too. So these are, they're not even negotiables in my life, making time for them. It's not negotiable, <laughs> you know, like this time that I set from here to here, that's, that's it. That's what I'm doing. If you want to find me, don't, because I won't talk to you in those, that period of time. <laughs> Cause that's my priority. I eat, breathe and, you know, dream it and all of that. So that's, where I'm coming from. And then, you know, actually I found in doing that, like putting those times aside, that's like sacred time. My mind is clear and ready for everything else. Right. You know, so I come in, so I get, I get up very early in the morning and I work out and I do my musical workout. And when I come in here and, you know, all kinds of crazy things come through my door here, right. I'm, I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> I'm ready for you. So of those three things you know player educator administrator which one seems to um dominate your headspace well they all three do as i said like I, you know i make time to to focus on things you know mm -hmm. structured focus time so we know when we're talking too i mean that and actually that all feeds into what do i do as an educator the most important thing someone can learn is how to practice, how to use your time, you know, how to become a great player. Or, you know, I often say this to students, like, look at anybody who's great at anything, a great athlete, a great communicator, even a, you know, great family member. So, you know, you're you have to work at that. You have to, it's not by accident. Let's put it that way. Well, that's for so, um, yeah. So, you know, you have to, you have to master be the master of your time or it, it will master you do you have a guitar close by i do can you pick one up yes i can pick one up this is a actually a funny little guitar my friends oh i can give them a little shout out i've been meaning to yeah they call it the boston it's flaxwood they designed it for me because i'm here in my office at berkeley and the, it's very dry here, and it's very hard to keep a guitar here. So my friend told me about f this Flaxwood guitar, and um, so I, I reached out to them, and they uh, were really cool because I usually play, I only play short scale guitars. So they made this short scale um, guitar for me. So anyway. So it's a 24 and 3 quarter? It, well, what they did was they actually took their regular, and they moved the nut. <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyway, but it's cool. I'm still getting used to it. And they put some P90s in it. Yeah, I saw that. I leave, I leave it here. It's, it's cool. So. No, I, yeah. you were gonna play. You're you're playing a lick on her. What? Those strings look pretty thin. Are those like ten? No, they're actually. It's a set of twelves. Actually. Twelves. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. So, what are you working on yourself personally? That's why I actually asked you to pick up the guitar. What, 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 what are you, what are you working on? What's, what's driving your music these days? Ah, oh, I like these questions. What do you practice? I always ask people, what do you practice? And actually, there was a friend of mine when we were students at Berkeley, and we asked him, what do you? We were like, we went, we would listen at his practice room, like, what is he practicing? That sounds weird. And he, and so we're like, what are you practicing? And he said, what I can't do. Ah. <laughs> I heard that. But um, but in particular, I mean, I have a practice routine that I do every day. It's two hours of technique that I've developed. And every it changes day? all the time. Yeah, yeah, every day. And it, it changes. Obviously, it's fluid to what things, what problems I have, right? So I'm always identifying my problems and attempting to fix them. But um, but I have some music. I'm playing this Pat Martino, yeah, right? I have so many problems too. I love that. <laughs> but I'm I'm I have the, I'm part of this. I'm really honored and kind of terrified. But I, I'm the Pat Martino Celebration of Life is coming right. up next month, and so I'm being Pat. I'm playing with his quartet. Hat, one of his early quartet, which actually Jim Riddle played in my band, so we have a great relationship. Yeah. But I'm, so we're playing a set of the music that they did with that band with Jim Riddle. So right now I'm really p focusing my technique. So what I like to do is I have a technical studies, and then I like to filter them through repertoire so that they're not just, hey, look, I can do this thing. Right. It's oh now let's put it in musical context. So so I'm simultaneously studying these couple of tunes so that when I get to the performance I can just play music and not be thinking of anything. Because really that point when you get on the stage there it's like lights are on but nobody's home. You know what I mean? Like you gotta dive in. Actually, interesting enough, somebody just contacted me from MIT, a scientist, and they want to use me as a guinea pig in a study about the flow. And I'm gonna come in and they're gonna hook electrodes up to me and I'm gonna play and they're gonna, I, I, will, I need to talk to them more about what their parameters of the zone is. I, I'm One of the things they were talking about was like heart rate and breathing, but really that's where you, you need to be in a relaxed state for performance. You also need to practice in a relaxed state. They correlate, right? Right. So anyway, when I'm working on material or, you know, I did a new record at the beginning of the year. So what was I, how did I prepare for that? I take all that music and I put it under a microscope and really work so that kind of in slow motion through things so that I really internalize it so that I'm relaxed with it when I come right. to perform. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a whole process. So, so you're doing the Pat Martino thing that's coming up, which is really, really cool. Fried Hawk is uh, really involved in that. And I believe Dave mm -hmm. Stryker's, you know, mm -hmm. involved in that. And mm -hmm. um, Joe D'Onofrio was a good buddy, um, mm -hmm. you know, because when Pat was still alive, we used to do a lot of things with Joe and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and Pat and all that. But, uh, well, that's a big challenge because, you know, Pat's, uh, Pat's Pat, you know. Mm -hmm. And you're playing with your with his original his original band from from back what what years would that have been? Well, it's um, Steve Varner on bass and mm -hmm. Wookie on drums, which I'm really excited because I never play with him and I he's one of my favorite drummers and um, Byron Landum Wookie um, and Jim Riddle, so they did a couple records in uh, I guess in the '90s, The Maker mm -hmm. and a couple of those. So so we're yeah we're playing some of those tunes, so it'll be fun. Oh, that that'll be great. That 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 really will be great. You were playing something for us. What what were you? What were you? I did, oh, I know. I just on? played a whole tone scale. Uh huh. Whatever. Yeah. Very, Love very, that sound. Very very nice. Um. So, in your own music, um, are you composing anything right now? Are you are you getting ready to record anything going on? Any tours? Any anything you want to tell people about? While yeah. We're well, I will. Today? 
I recorded uh, at the beginning of this last year with a new quartet with Harvey S., my longtime um, buddy, mm -hmm. amazing bass player. Um, Harvey S., Neil Smith on drums, and Mickey Hayama on, on keyboards. We recorded a, a record, but it's coming out on vinyl in May of 2023. And the, you know the whole thing about vinyl was Adele wanted to put vinyl out. And, sh and there aren't a lot of places anymore that produce vinyl. So every vi everybody who wanted to make vinyl got pushed back so that they could make millions of these records for Adele. So, you know, the record has all been recorded for a while, but it will come out in 2023 on vinyl. So, and I'm actually planning a whole series with my, I'm gonna really go into my YouTube channel and, and build it up. So there'll be a, a release every week. I have videos. So I've created these videos for the, the each song. So each song, there's eight songs and they'll be released uh, one week and they'll be sort of a inside behind the scenes of each tune. Right. So I'll talk about how we can, I composed it, what my thoughts were, how the band worked on it. And then, you know, so every two weeks there'll be a new uh, digital release of it that way. You'll be able to get it from my web page, of course, but the vinyl also too. It's kind of always funny when you say stuff in an interview and it's timely, but I'll be um, at uh, obviously the Pat Martino celebration in yeah. um, November. And then my, uh, my trio, my organ trio, we play at the Cellar Dog in New York. We'll be there at the end of the month. Um, and I'll be at the Zinc Bar. You know, Zinc Bar has guitar night also yeah. uh, on Monday night. So uh, December 19th, if you're in New York City, I'll be at the Zinc Bar, which is a great venue. Um, and they have, and if you're in New York on Monday nights, Zinc Bar guitar night, Wednesday night with Frank Vignola guitar night at Birdland. So, you know. So let's talk about that experience for a little bit. Uh, you've been knowing Frank a long time? Yeah, you know, I know Frank for a long time. And the first time I met him, I was terrified of him. And he was so cool because we were, uh, we were, there was an amp company, Jazz Cat, and we were playing them and we were at the NAMM show. So they said, well, you're going to do a set with Frank Vignola. And I had heard he did all this Django stuff. And I was terrified. I was like, well, first of all, I can't play fast and I can't play that. And he's just going to shred me. And then he comes over to play and he goes, hey, let's play a Frank Zappa song. <laughs> so he taught, no. he taught me a Frank Zappa song and then we just played crazy songs that, you know, that we liked and we had a blast and I just was like, all right, this guy's cool. I like Frank this is the most gracious <laughs> guy in the world. Absolutely. Um, you know, I've, I've, he made me sound good. We, you know, we, we played together. I mean, he is so gracious. It's unbelievable. And he can play whatever he wants to. I, absolutely. I've seen him do, he's to me, he's an impeccable guitarist. I've yep. seen him do solo stuff. And obviously I used to see him with um, Les Paul. But I, I think this thing that he has on Wednesday, I always thought about this. You know, I used to go to LA and play with John Pisano's. He had a guitar night in LA. And I was right. like, why doesn't New York have that? The thing with John Pisano is he's such a statesman and ambassador of the guitar. Mm -hmm. And he would make you feel welcome. And that's what you need. And that's Frank. That's Frank. Frank. Yeah. Is that and you know the New York equivalent of that like when he's so giving on stage and you know he's such a monstrous player but he steps back and lets the guest be the guest. The, when when Frank told me he was going to be doing this, um, we started you know uh, talking about it. Yeah. And we did an interview with John and we talked specifically about Guitar Night um, to sort of let people know why what's going on with the Guitar Night you know in New York. And um, John was just great. I mean, he's just, you know, he was such a gracious guy. It's, a, it's an, If you got you know, a few minutes to listen to something, you, you might, you know, check it out. I'd love to. Um, but, you know, Frank, again, he's, you know, he's uh, incredibly gracious, a wonderful, wonderful player. He can do whatever he wants to. And I love what what he teaches is so important, which is about learning songs. It's learning songs, yeah. <laughs> Joe Pass, you know, learn songs. Yeah, yep. But you know, in your playing, let's get back to your playing a little bit. I was listening, you know, to play. You you very much um, you remind me of Pat Martino in this. I always hear a horn when I hear Pat play, mm -hmm. and in your own playing, I'm hearing horns when I hear you mm -hmm. play your single note stuff. And and your comping, you know, you're you're always playing figures, you know, like if there were, you know, you're playing you play a lot of figures, but your horn phrasing, 
I mean, your your single note phrasing is very, very horn. Is it, would you agree with me on this or am I? Well, thank you. Yes. And because, well, you know, when I was a kid, this is the kind of thing kids think about. I was like, well, horn players can only solo. Right. So if I want to be a good soloist, I should really check out horn players. But, you know, my. Now how old you would, were you when you said that? I don't know, probably 15. That's like a 15 year old thought. Not me. I wouldn't have thought that. If it, that's crazy. <laughs> but also, my doorway into jazz was really l hearing Charlie Parker, and yeah. I and I said when I heard him, I said either that guy's crazy or he's a genius. I and I was like, wait, I think he's there's something in there. Let me figure that out. So that's sort of how I started. So I, I always wanted to start. I always wanted to sound like a horn, and I always was attracted to guitar players that sound like horn players, which are Joe Pass, mm -hmm. who just transcribed directly from um, Charlie Parker and Jimmy Rainey, were my favorite humans besides Charlie Parker when I was 15 years old. So thank you. It's very important to me to have that authentic articulation. It's the articulation. Yeah, I mean, you were playing something. I'm just, you know, you're playing something that would just, you know, I'm sorry, I've not warmed up. <laughs> I should practice more, but you play it was just it was just you know a fine little you know the the melody line was was just so elegant, you know. Mm. I guess that was the word. It was just you know oh, el very very elegant lines, and uh, I can't believe I just hit a bad note. I did. I'm not Frank. Um, play play two more times, and it'll sound right. Well, I, I, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. I'm standing here, but but I mean, it was just a just really really elegant. So. Um, the fact that you at 15 years old had recognized, you know, single notes come out of horns. I mean, they don't, they're not polyphonic and that, that that's, you know, I had a friend of mine that, um, that actually played with Charlie Parker. Um, mm -hmm. He was his, was a piano player in New York city. I'm not going to go too far into that, but mm -hmm. I think your comment about he's either genius or crazy. I think he was a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. so, yes. <laughs> so that was I, the answer I found too. Yeah. That was a little bit of both. <laughs> Well, listen, um, I really appreciate your time today. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to, to mention? Let's talk about your record really quick. So the record that you're bringing out in May is, you said you, re is that the one that you recorded in the beginning of last yeah, year? Yeah, yeah. So that's a new quartet. It'll be out in May. So check my website and check. Uh, uh, right now, my YouTube page is a little desolate, but it's going to it's gonna hit. Um, so it'll be on vinyl and digital through me. And also in March, I'm also kind of terrified of this. Anat Cohen is curating a guitar night at SF Jazz, which is a lovely venue in San Francisco. And, you know, of course she works with the greatest guitarists. <laughs> so I'm a little nervous why she called me. But anyway, so look for something in March with Anat Cohen at SF Jazz. Uh, March 20 you're gonna ha you listen this is an open door okay you just you know when you got stuff call me text me email okay, me cool, cool, cool. you know send up smoke signals whatever you want to do okay. uh, it's an open door we you know okay. our our magazine is your magazine if you will so you, thank well, I appreciate that let us let us know and that, that goes for the school as well I mean if you got something you want us you know to get get out we we do hit a lot of people these days. You know, we've been at this for five years now, so it's mm -hmm. it's um, pretty amazing that we're, we're doing. Right. You know, but we appreciate you for sure. Um, well, this has been delightful. I mean, I really, I mean, yeah, yeah, that, super really. fun. Yeah, thank, thank thanks a bunch. You. So this is Bob Baker with Cheryl Bailey. Um, we thank you all for out. Uh, you know, I don't, I never promote this thing the, the right way. So we want you to subscribe. It's free. It's free you know, and, and share and follow and all the stuff you're supposed to do on social media. Check out Cheryl's website. If you want to know more about her, you should know more about her period. Um, you know, and we thank you all for watching Cheryl. I thank you for being here. Take care. Bye-bye now.